Hey everyone, I am Divya Shah. As a ServiceNow developer, I spend a lot of time thinking about how we can make ServiceNow work smarter. So recently, I have been exploring on how to connect the power of the modern AI models directly into the ServiceNow instance and build something I am expected to share with you guys. So today, I want to walk you through a project I developed called the ServiceNow MCP server. It's an integration server designed specifically to act as a bridge. It allows the AI models communicating via the model context protocol to interact seamlessly and securely with the ServiceNow. So imagine an AI being able to automatically create incidents, generate knowledge base articles or even service catalog items for you. That's the kind of automation the server enables. So in this video, I'll explain what is it, cover the key functions I've built into it, show you how you can set it up, demonstrate some examples and share some best practices I think are important. So without wasting any time, let's get started. So what is this ServiceNow MCP server at its core? So, I've built it using the Python 3.12 version. I specifically chose this version for its modern features and logged it in the logged it in using .python.version file for consistency. The server's primary job is to listen for the instructions formatted according to the model context protocol. MCP is essentially a structured language that allows the AI models to understand the context of an application like ServiceNow and tell it what actions to perform. So think of the server as a custom interpreter and AI model decides, I need to create a ServiceNow incident with these specific details. And that's it. It sends that instructions via the MCP. My server will receive it, understand the request, translate it into the appropriate ServiceNow REST API call using the credentials you provide, execute it, and then handle the response. I designed it to be efficient and secure, focusing on automating those really common everyday ServiceNow tasks. Now let's look at the specific capabilities I've included in the server. I focused on functions that cover frequent ServiceNow development and administration needs. First, create incident. This function lets you program programmatically create new incident records. You just need to provide parameters like short description, description, caller ID, urgency and impact. Then next is the create KB article function. I've added this so you can automate knowledge creation. You can pass in short description, the article body, the target KB knowledge base society and the desired workflow state like a draft. Then there is a create client script. This allows you to generate client script, ja client side JavaScript for forms. You specify its name, the table it applies to, the actual script, the UI type, the script type, and the field name if it's an on-chain script. Then we similarly create a business rule. This function lets you create server-side logic. You provide the name, the table, the script itself, when it should run, its order, and the action flags. The next thing I have also included is the create SLA definition, create record producer function, and lastly, the create variable setting, which lets you create reusable groups of variables for your catalog items, just provide a name, description, and the JSON structure defining the variables. So um, by creating these uh, functions in my uh, repository, my goal here was to provide a solid foundation for automating these key service now objects. Getting this server running isn't too complicated. Here's what you'll need to have things ready. First, as I mentioned, the server requires this specific version of Python, which is 3.12. Second, you obviously need a ServiceNow instance to connect to. I strongly recommend starting with a personal development instance for testing. It's free and it's very safe. Third, you'll need a user account in your instance that has necessary permissions or in other terms of ServiceNow rules to perform the actions the server, server will take. For example, ITL to create incidents, knowledge admin for KB articles, plus REST API Explorer or equivalent API app for equivalent API access. And lastly, uh, is the thing of if you plan to have an AI like Gemini actually drive the server, you'll need the AI's API key configured in whatever application is hosting that AI model. Next, the configuration itself is done using the simple .env file. I've included a template called .env.example in this repository. You just copy that file, rename it to .env and fill it with your ServiceNow instance, uh, URL, your ServiceNow username and your password. Using an env file like this is a standard practice to keep your credentials secure and separate from the code. While username, password works for initial setup, I highly recommend you to look for ServiceNow's token based authentication for better security in the long run. So let's, uh, we have set up this thing all. now. Let's make this more concrete. How would you actually use these functions? Let's imagine you have an external system. For now, this video, we'll be using the Cloud Desktop that needs to interact with the service now through my MCP server. 
So let's start with creating an incident. Say your monitoring tools detects an issue. Your tool would send a request to the server, create incident endpoint. It would pass the data like short description, which is database connection error, prod DB, description, uh, caller ID, urgency, and impact. Then my server takes this information, makes the rest call to the service now, and the incident gets created instantly, exactly as specified. Now, how about creating a KV article? Maybe you have a process that generates troubleshooting guides. So this, it would also help in creating KV articles. Similarly, uh, it is for the creating record producer, then creating variable states and whatnot. So these examples give you an idea of the possibilities for more specific on parameters and usage for all the functions. I have documented them with the examples in the service now test examples.md file within this repository. Using any kind of information tool, especially that interacts with the critical systems like service now requires care. Based on my experience building and thinking about the server, here are some of the, some of the best practices I strongly recommend you to use. First, secure your credentials. I can't stress this enough. Use the least privileged ServiceNow account possible. If you can set up and use token-based authentication instead of this, instead of storing passwords directly in the env file, use them. Test thoroughly in the non-production server. Please don't point this directly at your production instance first. Use a PDI or development instance to test every function you plan to use. Make sure it behaves exactly as you expect. Third, implement a robust error handling. The system calling my server needs to handle potential errors. What if ServiceNow is temporarily unavailable? What if bad data is sent? Your calling application should check this response codes and handle the failures gracefully. The fourth point is adhere to the ServiceNow standards. When you use the server to create scripts, business rules, catalog items, make sure you follow your organization's naming conventions and development guidelines within the ServiceNow. This will keep the things clean and maintainable. And last but not the least point is to monitor the performance and the API usage. Keep an eye on how many API calls the server is making. Make sure it's performing efficiently and not hitting the ServiceNow API rate limits. So that's my ServiceNow so MCP server. I've developed it to provide a clear programmatic way for external systems, particularly AI models to interact with the core ServiceNow functionalities. My aim was to create a useful tool for automating tasks like incident creation, knowledge management, and service catalog configuration. I believe the server can be valuable asset for anyone looking for to integrate AI or other automated processes deeper into the ServiceNow environment. I encourage you to check out the repository on GitHub. The readme.md file has also the setup instructions and the ServiceNow test example.md file provides the detailed usage examples. So that's all from my side. Thanks for taking the time to learn about the project I created. Uh, and if you find this explanation helpful, please give a video like, consider subscribing me if you're interested in more ServiceNow development insights and automation ideas. And if you have any questions about the server or thoughts on how you might use it, please leave a comment below. I would genuinely like to hear from you and answer your questions. So happy automating and I'll see you in the next video.